Hey, what is up guys, Bongos here. So today in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to route MIDI in Kickflip Band Lab. It's actually kind of a complicated process and there weren't very many good tutorials online for showing you how to route MIDI in Kickflip Band Lab. So I'm gonna be showing you how to route MIDI. So let's get into it, woo. Also later in the video, I'm gonna show a really, really awesome MIDI routing plugin. And it's really, really awesome for trap beats. I have been using it all the time in the past like week or so like that. I'm gonna have other videos talking about how this is so important to your workflow, but it's a really, really awesome plugin. So stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna empty project here right now. So what I wanted to first do is I'm gonna show you how to route MIDI to different channels of one specific plugin. For example, I'm gonna open up X-Band 2, and literally all I did was I hit the plus sign here and I chose X-Band 2. I didn't do any fancy like configuration kind of stuff, because we're just gonna leave it just how it is. And as you can see on channel A, we have it routed to MIDI 1. On channel B, now I want you to route it to MIDI 2. And I believe this process is similar if you're using like contact or something like that, or another track that has like multiple outputs. But personally, I know it's quite a few of my subscribers use X-Band, so I wanna show you guys how to do this. And then I want you to right click in this empty area, hit enter in MIDI track, and then right click again and say enter MIDI track. In X-Band, you can actually have four channels right here, but I'm only gonna show an example using the first two. So on channel one, I'm going to change this to hard leads um, meta phase. And then on channel two, I'm gonna choose synth brass, sounds like duck. And then I make sure that I turn workspace to all, so you can kind of see all the information coming through. And then I wanna click on this little track two here, which is my first empty MIDI track. I'm gonna change the output to X-Band two. I'm also gonna do that for this track down here. So now both of these tracks are being routed into X-Band. And on this first track, which I'm going to call channel one for clarification, and I'm going to change the MIDI channel to one semicolon X-Band two. And then on the second track, which I'm going to call channel two for clarification, I'm going to change the MIDI channel to two colon X-Band two. So now if what happens if we click on channel one and play the keyboard, it's playing from the first channel. And then we click on channel two and we play it on the keyboard. It's playing from that channel. Now what we can do to prove our point is we can just place a couple of notes down. Then and then if you look from here, all of the audio here is coming out of this track, but these two tracks down here are making the input for that audio track. So that's also another thing. I want to be very clear that these two tracks aren't making any sound even though there's like even though these things are going up and down. The only the audio is coming out of here. So now let me get into that really, really awesome MIDI routing plugin. So I'm gonna hit add track, I'm gonna choose instrument, and I'm gonna change, change my instrument to Ripcord. This Ripcord plugin is really, really awesome. It's free, it's linked in the description, check it out. Basically what happens with this plugin is that if you play like a C in your keyboard, it plays a C major chord. So you can see if I play a C on my keyboard, it makes all of those notes up there, which is a G9 sus4. That's a really, really fancy chord, but let's figure out how to route the MIDI so that we can actually hear audio. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna hit the plus sign, and then I'm making a new plugin. It literally doesn't matter what plugin you use. I'm gonna use Keystone Classic because everyone uses it. And then we're gonna go back into Ripcord plugin and we're gonna change VSD3 to enable MIDI output. Now that we've done that, go on Keystone Classic and change the input to Ripcord 1. And I'm gonna choose Ripcord 1 MIDI Omni. Now, so now if we make all of these have input echo on, so click these little input echo signs, then you can just play around. So as you can see, I'm just playing single notes on my keyboard. This is what I'm playing on the keyboard down here in this bottom screen. It's just playing really, really awesome soul jazzy kind of chords. I can see a super chill song coming from that. Anyway, so this is a preset I made right here. I made this morning, it's called G minor basic trap chord progression. Basically, if you just try it out, it sounds like this. So this plugin is just a really fun plugin to work with and my next video is actually going to be about this plugin right here. So it's going to be about my workflow with it and it's just really, really fun to use. So I have three videos a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, they're all cakewalk videos. If you like this video, if this video helps you, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Um, it means a lot to me. Weekly live streams, everything is based on cakewalk. See you guys later. Woo!